Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am filming a Bob Jones University Q&A. I am a junior at Bob Jones University, and this video is completely my own video of my opinions, experience, or the knowledge I've gained from being a student. This is not officially affiliated with Bob Jones, although I am a student at Bob Jones. Now that we have that out of the way, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Elise. Thank you so much for joining and thank you guys so much for over 700 subscribers now. We are starting to pick up our growth pace and I'm super thankful and happy for the community that we have here and also on Instagram. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, you can follow me here. It's at Elise Lewis YT. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the questions. I've made a lot of other videos on Bob Jones University content, so I have an entire playlist that you can check out right up here or in the description box below. If you have more questions, then please leave them in the comments so that in the future, when I do another Q&A, then I can have a bulk list of questions, or if they're small, then I can answer them in the comments as well. So she said, my friend and I are interested in Bob Jones, and she found my YouTube channel and she asked some questions. Do they control what you do on your phone? Bob Jones does not have liberty to control what's on your phone. You have your own rights, so your phone is up to you on what you do on it. However, they do ask that you don't do certain things on it. They do ask that you don't listen to certain music and they do ask that you are being wise and discerning with what you're viewing on the internet on your phone. They do have access to helpful resources for you that you can sign up for if you want. These things are like covenant eyes and things that block sites. Once you sign up for them and go to Bob Jones and you request them, to help you with this. You can go to the student care office and they have those resources there. For instance, Covenant Eyes, I think it either blocks sites or tracks the sites that you visit and how frequently you visit them so that then you can see them and you can have an accountability partner on trying to um, get rid of that struggle or get rid of that addiction or whatever it is. So Bob Jones takes it seriously and they are very kind to have resources and confidentiality within the student care office so that no one else knows if you're even getting access to this resource. This is just an open resource that you can get if you want. Next, are you allowed to have your phone on you on campus? Yes, absolutely. There are very few professors who, if you're on your phone consistently while in class, they will take your phone. They'll first warn you and ask you to be off your phone, and they'll tell you at the beginning of the semester if they're a s professor who does that with technology. I have known one professor say that he would take a phone if the students were not off of that but usually um, it's not an issue at all. If you read your syllabus for that class and follow it, then you'll know that for certain classes, technology is not allowed and it's um, you're disobeying the rules if you use technology in that class. However, that does not mean that you can't have a laptop or your phone in your bag. And obviously you're allowed to get up and go to the bathroom at any time. You don't have to ask if it's an emergency and you know you have to then just get up and go to the hallway and use your phone for that emergency situation. And honestly, with Bob Jones, the communication system that they use is emails. So you're gonna wanna have your phone on you at all times so that you can get access to those emails. Additionally, I usually keep my ID in the back of my phone in my phone case. So I always have my phone and then if I have like a clear case on, I can just scan my ID. You have to scan your ID for, um, if you have a meal plan at the dining common, and then also after chapel, DG, and society so that they can track that you were present. Then for safety reasons, do you guys have locks on your doors in the dorms? And does anyone in management have access to if they want? So yes, there's locks in the doors and how you unlock your door is with your ID card. And your ID card is set up to where only you and your roommates can unlock that room with your ID card. However, you can also set your door to where it doesn't lock and it can just be open freely. Me and my roommates freshman year kept our door locked and we would always just like unlock it every time we went in. And then sophomore year, me and my roommate did not lock our door. We only locked it for like weeks when high schoolers would be in the dorms as well. The external doors are all locked at all times. So that is like the initial safety check is the outside dorm doors. Those are always locked. And if you're a female, your ID cards will unlock any of the female dorms. And if you're a guy, it'll unlock any of the guys' dorms. But 
the guys won't unlock the girls and the girls won't, won't unlock the guys. And then for town students, they have an ID card, but it doesn't unlock the dorms at all. Additionally, there's two RAs per floor, one mentor per floor, and one dorm soup or dorm supervisor for the entire dorm. So those people have also have access to ID cards. Those ID cards unlock any door in the dorm, and that's for safety reasons, because they are partially in charge of you and your safety. And that's why the dorms have desk hours where an RA or mentor sits at the desk. But also after hours, we have a late book and they do good nights, which is just making sure that you guys are all present so that you're not like off missing or something bad happened at all. Now to cleaning and management. They do not have ID cards that get them in your personal room. The cleaning people don't go in your rooms, but management does for like AC problems and things like that and sink problems. They have to go to an RA or a dorm mentor to let them in your room and they monitor them and they stand there outside your door or inside your room while the cleaning people are in there. And then once the cleaning people are done, sorry, the management people are done, then they leave and then your um, dorm mentor or RA will leave with them. So they're always supervised. It's never like they can have full access to your dorm. She said, I saw that um, they don't have peepholes and what's up with that? I don't know the actual reason why we don't have peepholes in the doors. I would assume the reason we don't have peepholes is because since the external dorm doors are locked, there's only gonna be the people in the dorm that are students living in that dorm or the staff or other girls for the girls' dorms. And there's a system of like always having pers a person at the main lobby desk which can have a clear view through both hallways that you wouldn't need a peephole. And as I said, I don't know the actual reason why they don't have peepholes in the doors, that's just my guess. Next question, also wanted to ask about the culture and teaching, how are the professor's attitudes, do you feel like you can trust them? Please answer honestly. As you guys know, I will always answer honestly on this channel, so you don't have to worry about that. All the professors are not the same because each person is an individual person, so I know it's kind of obvious, but it's just a good thing to keep in mind that you can't take an experience with one professor and apply it to all the Bob Jones professors. At Bob Jones, they are very intentional about who they choose as the professors, and each professor introduces themselves at the beginning of their class, and on their syllabus, they have like a whole about me and stuff like that. You can also go online um, at bju.edu, and you can read about each of them if you want to do that. I'll leave that link down below for the professors and then also for other Bob Jones resources for you guys. But on the culture and the professors' attitudes, pretty much like across the board, their attitudes are very high or very good or at least very positive. So if they're not super energetic and like, hi, how is it going guys? They're at least positive. They're like, it's a new day, it's great weather today, we're gonna do this. All the professors that I've had have tried to connect with their students. Some do a better job or a more intense job than others. And that's partially naturally because some are like freshman speech teachers and then others are like Bible doctrines teachers and others are like history teachers. So you're gonna be a little bit different. And all of them expect you to follow the syllabus and read the syllabus that they provide you with, but some will be more um, serious about it in class. Some will say, I've given you guys a syllabus, you need to follow this syllabus to be a good student. And you know, if you're a great student, awesome. Let's go. I've only had one professor that's been like that, or actually two. They were for like history and philosophy and those types of classes. So there's kind of a reason because they're very knowledgeable, very experienced with those fields. I don't know, they weren't very outgoing people, but they were never mean. And they were also very encouraging when I came to them honestly and was like, hi, I'm trying to put the work in here and follow your syllabus and do this, but I'm struggling with my grade or I'm struggling with this or how can I improve and then they would be like okay I see your hard work this is how you can improve from here it's always a good thing to try to give your professor respect and to ask honest questions and to consider how busy your professor is and how they actually want to help you and take those both into account. But most of my professors are have been very energetic, very kind. They give extra credit opportunities. We take for granted sometimes how amazing some of our professors are because they are so great. And every professor grades differently and every professor has a different background of experiences. So that professor's background of experiences is gonna shape how they treat you and the people that are in that class. But with many of my professors, I can still, like, when I walk by them, I still say hi and 
like that's huge and most of them remember my name as well and um, that's really special another thing about Bob Jones and your professors is that sometimes you can even go to the same church as some of your professors which sounds really weird but it's kind of cool because then you get to know a whole other side of that person that you didn't get to see in the classroom setting and even like talk to them over coffee when you're getting coffee in the little like community area. Whatever church you go to, not all of them have coffee, but you can see professors in those settings and that really helps you see the professor as a person rather than just like the scary professor. 